May we present the KTM 690 Enduro R and Elena Wouters, who is one of the founders of the Riding Reporters. So I'm also Riding Reporter ready. I've got my t-shirt on and gonna ride the bikes today for the first time, for me at least. Irene has already been here, of course, for quite a while. So she knows everything about the bikes. Fortunately, they are lowered. So I must totally fit on this monster. And uh, yeah, I'm just so much looking forward to riding it today. Hi, everyone. So we're still in Montevideo right now. And uh, we've been here for almost a week because um, Irene has been making a nice report about uh, the Punto de Rieles prison. So you can read on the, uh, about that on the Facebook page of the Riding Reporters. And uh, well, today we're gonna leave the city so uh, then we can check out some more of Uruguay. Well, all the bikes are nicely packed now. And we're ready to go. Woo -woo. Yay! <laughs> of the hostel matches the color of our bikes! Yay. So this is the place to be for us! Yay! <laughs> so, how much luggage fits on two KTM 690s? Well, you can see it right now. This bag. All this. Us! <laughs> <laughs> And all this shit. 
It really does so fit, I right? Have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Okay, so hello everyone. So this is our first morning in uh, Oral Atway. So we are in Punta del Diablo right now and we're gonna ride again for uh, quite some kilometers. And well, this is how we gear up our bikes. So we both got a big uh, roll bag, uh, which is full with our clothes. Then we have the two cases, which are actually also nice when you fall off because you know, all the cases and not uh, totally flat the bike. And uh, well, these are full with uh, gasoline, so if you run out, actually the bikes cannot really ride very far, so it's really good to have some spare, uh, spare gas. And well, then we also have our uh, tank bag that are here. So we fit right in the middle. <laughs> That's how we do it. And my bike also has uh, cases, but there we have uh, all the spare parts, like if you have a problem, to do some mechanical stuff, uh, which I don't know that much. We gave it as Do. So I ran outside, got the sun in my eyes, met up with a little truck, stole an ice cream truck, drove in a pothole, ended up in the hospital. Through face with the patients, got around many presents, took my dog for a walk, met her on the boardwalk, things got reversed, she took off her shirt. Procrastinating in the sun Take one, trying to ride with a selfie stick. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I can so that was it for trying to ride with selfie stick. It doesn't work. Haha. <laughs> Riding reporters in a cheap and tiny hostel room where we have to make up our own beds. It's really easy. <laughs> no problem at all. No problem at all. Ik ga er weer ophalen. 
ATM and riding reporters. Woo-hoo. See you next time. Procrastinating in the sun. It's Wednesday morning and we want to leave Buenos Aires today. But we, I think I'm still hungover from last Saturday. Oh, really? You are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not. I always sound like this. <laughs> yeah, no? Oh, unless. Okay. Take three. We no, were really it's like... take four. Okay. No. <laughs> take four. May I introduce to you Superwoman? Also known as Irene Walters. I'm totally hammered. She hasn't slept since 8 last morning and now it's 6 in the morning, day after. This woman, she rides the motorbike all day. She doesn't sleep. She doesn't really eat that much. She doesn't really drink that much. She gets totally burned from the Argentinian sun. But she just has to keep on going and going. So if it was up to her, we would just get back to our bikes and just continue riding for another at least 500 kilometers. So the person that is filming us really wants to go on to the next place. No, no, no. So actually, I can't take it anymore. Can you? Of course, we didn't only party in Buenos Aires. So we made it to the KTM shop in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and as you can see, there are a lot of KTMs in this country. So our bikes are getting new tires right now. Well, they look somewhat sad without their wheels.
Hi, everybody. Here we are again. Nice to see you. Uh, after enjoying Buenos Aires for a couple of days, including its nightlife, as you can hear by my voice, um, we're heading on our way to Ushaya. Let's see how far we can get today. Okay, now, are you ready to get your motor running? Yay! <laughs> Bye. -bye. See you later. Awesome bikes. So you might think that being a riding reporter is only fun, and of course that's also true. But uh, a big part of it is also just riding for many, many, many hours in a row in the burning heat, with lots of traffic, or just really long straight roads where you really have to uh, keep paying attention and not fall asleep. Especially the sun can be really hot. As you still stand, it's well to take good to Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot one part. There's also the vlogging and the vlogging. That also takes a lot of time. So, it's definitely work to be a riding reporter. Oh, yeah. 171. Wow. Yeah. Ja? We moeten doorrijden. Oké. Okay. So that's what I was talking about. The 
can be tough to be a riding reporter standing in a burning sun and having to make many kilometers per day wearing our very hot suits. Anyway, this is also part of the adventure. So this is the area that was on fire yesterday. As you can see everything is black. Anyway, you can understand now why they didn't let us pass yesterday. Uh, because we probably wouldn't have been able to breathe if we would have ridden through all that smoke. Anyway, glad to see that it's all over now.
in the water, yeah. being the scared for lions. the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we ride motorcycles, like, yeah. and do all that kind of stuff, but see, yeah, the sea lions. Sea lions are a little too much. <laughs> look, <laughs> too close. Look how huge they, they are. They, they bump against your head, really. <laughs> I'm very mortal. <laughs> they tried to uh, clear my ear after eight times it didn't work and it appeared that the other one was closed also and both of my eyes were infected and my throat was so I had to get antibiotics for everything and now I have to get back after a couple of days and after a lot of eardrops so they can try to uh, <laughs> open them up again. I'm sorry to let you all down. I'm just a human being. <laughs> Seven days. Seven days. Para que se, se, se disuelva. Para que salga ese tapón de cera. Seven days. Okay. Ligt ze dan hoor, motorbike woman, geveld door een ontstoken oor. Zo so jammer dit. After many drops and a couple of days, my ears still won't open up. So they're just as stubborn as the rest of me. But what's really awesome, uh, healthcare is for free. I get a lot of recipes and a lot of drops. And check this out. We even get free condoms. <laughs>
Oh my god, this really scared the fucking shit out of me. And the police is on the way. They might not believe it, but I'm in an ambulance right now because I fell off my motorbike because I suddenly had a flat tire in a corner while I was riding around 100 kilometers per hour. <laughs> anyway, I've got nothing. Like, I don't feel any pain and nothing bad happened. Actually, I just got up and that was it uh, while the motorbike was still laying on the road. But apparently in Argentina they have really good healthcare, so they just <laughs> tripped me up in this ambulance and are gonna take me to the hospital for an extra checkup. Well, I once had an accident before on the highway in Holland and that was much worse, but then they just left me on the streets. <laughs> so actually, thumbs up to the Argentinian uh, healthcare system because they take it very seriously and it's actually all for free as well so this is the lovely lady who helps me hello yay <laughs> <laughs> gracias they really do take healthcare really serious here in argentina i just got x-rays almost my entire body even though i don't really feel much pain i did however just found out that I once broke my tailbone. Well, I really had no clue. Now I know. So, it was 10 o'clock at night and we were still riding in the dark. And we almost reached the destination of the day, the final destination of the day, uh, using our last gasoline. So we were like, yes, we're almost there. And suddenly in a corner, I felt something really strange. My whole bike started moving like that. So I immediately thought there must be something wrong with the tire. And indeed, I got a flat front tire out of nothing. Uh, well, I managed to brake a little, but then in the end I did lose control over the bike. So it just slipped away underneath, uh, from underneath me. Anyway, I fell off, it was really soft. My head didn't touch the ground. My back didn't touch the ground. I felt completely nothing, no pain whatsoever, only, okay, my wrist hurts a little. But uh, then the ambulance came and then my whole body was x-rayed and now we are here in this hospital room where we are supposed to sleep for observation. But look, it's like a hotel. We've got two nice beds, a bathroom, and they even, they gave me an injection of diclofenac painkiller in my ass, which actually hurts more than a whole fucking, <laughs> than a whole bloody accident altogether. Anyway, who could have thought that the day would end like this? In every case, we must conclude one thing, and that is that the Argentinian healthcare system is maybe one of the best in the world. <laughs> And for free! Ever free! Yay! I hope the breakfast is included. Yeah. <laughs> so Irene, what do you think of our hotel room? Yeah, lovely color of the walls, clean beds, but there's one thing I'm missing. Where are the towels? Oh my god, this is such a bad service. Yeah, I think we have to leave. Yeah, let's go. Let's sneak out in the night before yeah. they notice. <laughs> Let's climb out of the window now again. <laughs> They're so happy. They've got a vision. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so this is the riding reporters from a hospital in Teca. Yeah, here in Teca. There was uh, really like three kilometers, huh? Three kilometers yeah. to the city. <laughs> we reached it. Oh, yes. Well. This is definitely okay. Yeah, we're glad nothing really bad happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this definitely is the most alternative hotel hotel room yeah. that we've ever been in. Great job. Great free, job. <laughs> free night. <laughs> free night. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> some of my stuff did get damaged. So some scratches on my nice helmet and my boot got all wrecked in my uh, trousers 
anyway, insurance will all pay for that. And uh, this is a good reminder for all and everyone who is riding a motorbike that you must always wear your gear because an accident can always happen and if I would not have been wearing my gear I would probably be in a very bad state right now so wear your gear so how was your first night in a hospital bed? <laughs> yeah. slept uh, okay perfect and we even get breakfast in bed oh my god what a luxury <laughs> And this is the father host of the place that we're invited to sleep tonight. And he's trying to repair the mirror of our bike that broke off yesterday during the crash. And our host of this evening is a motorbike lover too. Muy gracias por todos. Okay, so my mirror broke off again. How many more kilometers? <laughs> About 400. 400. Well, it's still early in the day, so we are probably gonna make it. Yep. Even with hey, one.
winds out of reason. Ja, ik had het niet door. Maar wel veel meer met kilometers heen. Ja? 220 kun je het zijn. Oh ja? Super. Hij moet gewoon een stuk harder werken als hij... Uh... Ja, en heel veel hadden we volgens mij in het begin wit mee. Toen uh, was het heel niet lekker. Ja, het reed makkelijk hè? Ja. So after a few hours of riding, my head always turns red over here. So that either means that my helmet is too small or that maybe the shape of the helmet doesn't isn't really compatible with the shape of my skull. Anyway, it's not a very nice feeling because the winds are also blowing so much so my helmet's being pressed against my forehead the whole time. Anyway, just have to keep on going. two motorbikes because we can't get money from the ATM and we need to find a way to pay for new gas otherwise we're stuck here in this tiny tiny village surrounded by Argentinian mountains okay Mr. Police Officer is going to pay for us right now so we can pay him back. 
so the gas issue has been fixed. Hooray! Waiting in the line of the gas station. This is a riding reporter's life. Het ziet er zo grappig uit. Tanken in de jerrycan. Tanken in de koffer. So what color underwear is Irene wearing today? Well as you can see it's pink and purple. One of the don'ts of going on a motorbike trip. Wearing a pants that is too big. Anyway. We forgive you for it! See you! <laughs> ja, dat is ons gelukt! We made it! Uh, How long does it take us to get here? Uh, I don't know, seven hours? Seven hours at least. Something like that. In the sun! So. Oh, oh this is the first time I've been. Oh, sweat! <laughs> Dit is al meer dan genoeg. We hebben een bedje. Ik heb mijn matje niet nodig vandaag. En het filmen. Soms. Nee hoor. Oké, okay, dan is het goed. Het was niet zo goed als ik had gewild. Het was een beetje opdekken. Sorry. Nog eentje. Zo volgende keer wat beter mijn best doen. Is goed. Nou, gisteren hadden we werkelijk een heerlijk ontbijt. Met fruit, croissantjes, van alles. Vandaag worden we verrast met twee volle bakken van deze... Heerlijke, harde, doorbakken, krokante stokbroodjes met jam en boter. We zaten net te bedenken waarvoor zouden mensen dit zelf daadwerkelijk ook echt ochtends eten. Maar ik denk dat het best zou kunnen. Want het lijkt me echt ideaal om je tanden te slijpen voor de rest van de dag al dat vlees te verwerken. Wat denk jij? Dat moet het zijn. Oh. Kan het iets anders zijn? Zo. Zitten we goed? Hè? Zitten we goed? Ja, ik wil toch even checken, ja. Ja, en dan krijg je juist meer grip. Ja, ja, ja. Dus deze moment, je moet het 
probeer dat ook een beetje na te denken ook weer van hoe zat het technisch ook alweer. Ja, met dat waaien zei de Sjaak tegen ons van uh, je moet niet tegen gaan doen, je moet gewoon je adem loshouden en oh, ja. laten waaien. Ja, en je hoofd ook. Ja, en ik vind het graag, want je lichaam is wel oh, lastig Doe Ik zeg hier spieren inderdaad, deze spieren. Hoe dicht de grond is, oké. Okay. Ja. motorbike travelers here in Argentina because today we met Carol and Patrick from France. France and Germany we're also traveling by bike together just on one so that's very impressive <laughs> nice meeting you nice meeting Yay. You. <laughs> Well, suddenly even more motorbikers on the road. <laughs> Apart from us, well, there are three cool bikes. Let's go again.
superwoman doing some after off-road stretching. Show us what you can. Do the split. <laughs> yeah, well. Yay! Oh! Nog even de ander, ja. De spagaat. Wow. <laughs> Wanneer ik ben op de zit er ook in. Oh ja. Superwoman in super shape. Ready for another day on the road? Yay! Nee, voor bed. Oh, ready for bed first. Okay, okay. <laughs> We have reached the city right before Ushuaia, about 600 kilometers before we reached the most southern city in the world. Anyway, this is the first day that it's raining, like, really bad. In combination with the cold and the wind, we have to see what we do today. It's raining inside. It's even. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. <laughs> So these are the weather conditions that we are gonna face today. But hey, it just takes something to make it to Ushuaia, the most southern city in the world. And our KTMs are nicely packed. We are wearing our raincoats. So let's go for it. Argentina to arrive at Ushuaia and thankfully we are wearing all our gear, rain gear etc. So even though it's raining we still manage. How do you feel riding reporter? I feel uh, very dry and really thin. Perfect. <laughs> Hooray! So we made it into Chile and are now waiting to cross uh, the river here. And fortunately, it also stopped raining. And temperature wise, we can handle it. It's about 15 degrees, I think. And yeah, there's the ferry coming to take us across the river. And then we have to ride a little bit more through Chile before we cross the border to Argentina again. And then hopefully, before midnight, we can make it to Ushuaia to celebrate New Year's Eve there. <laughs> well, let's see, it's at least another 500 kilometers. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to watch and see. Tierra de Fuego, Chile. Yeah. Happy, happy. <laughs>
We are at the border of Argentina again right now. So from Chile, going back to Argentina to Ushuaia. And as you can see, we're not the only motorbike riders who have been here. Or cyclists, other adventure travelers. <laughs> really nice. So we just got back into Argentina. Look over there, you can see a guanaca. It's one of the animals here. There are many, you can see many on the road. And look at the sky. So dark. So we're probably gonna see some rain very soon. Anyway, we're still on the road to Ushuaia and it's about another 300 kilometers before we reach it. And well, it's about 5.30 right now and tonight at 12 o'clock it's going to be the new year 2017. So that's really exciting. I hope we can make it before 12 o'clock. Let's go. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Ride as fast as we can to Ushaya! Yes, to make it before midnight so that we can celebrate New Year in Ushaya with our German friends! Yay! <laughs> Yeah. 
Precies 12 uur. Hey. We zitten hier bij de Sirens. Ja. Apparently this is the Ushuaian way of celebrating New Year. There is our hostel. In all languages, mix up. Okay, one, two, three, go! Okay. <laughs> So this is summer in Ushuaia, it's snowing <laughs> and raining and we are gonna hike for four hours to? In the snow. Yes, to Lake Esmeralda. This would have been so much fun to do with the KTMs. Yeah. <laughs> and probably I would fall less. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and get less dirty. <laughs> You can do it! <sighs> yes! <laughs> Beautiful landscape and the snowy mountains. <laughs> We're climbing to Laguna Esmeralda right now which is close to Ushuaia, the most southern city in the world. And so this is Tierra del Fuego, uh, translated as the land of fire. And I don't know why, because it's summer now and it's still only maybe 8 or 10 degrees. And it's constantly snowing and raining. And you can see there's snow on the mountains. Can you see it? Yes, over there. So, this Israeli guy. <laughs> and yeah, it's really, really nice to be here. It's very beautiful. So, we made it to the Laguna Esmeralda. So we traveled for 16,000 kilometers to Ushuaia, the end of the world, to meet here tons of Israeli people wearing Amsterdam hats. <laughs> so the world is a very small place. We're all connected. Thank you guys. <laughs>
Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> I just love off-road! <laughs> As you can see, it's all marshland here. Really wet, really soft. What do you think of it? Very beautiful place. I enjoy Ushuaia like I never enjoy nothing. Very beautiful here. It's raining and snowing and I never feel a snow. My first time that snow on me. So, nice. Very beautiful. That's special. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, so we made it. I made it. Back to the road. <laughs> now we need to find a hitchhike back to the city. <laughs> so, shoes clean again. Okay. We had parked the bikes here in the garden of our hostel and we just managed to get Irene's bike out over these stairs here that went all all right and then we got to my bike but unfortunately I've got a flat tire again so there must be something wrong with um, maybe the inner tire of my front wheel anyway this is gonna take another few more hours before we can leave Let's go find a mechanic. Trying to ride with a flat front tire on our way to the mechanic. <laughs> Doing a great job, Irene. The second flat tire in like one and a half week. I hope it's gonna be able, they're gonna be able to fix it. So this is the place where they're gonna fix the front tire! So it turns out that the inner tire wasn't fixed properly the other time and that's why it's flat again. Anyway, I'm happy it didn't happen on the highway like last time but just when it was standing still. So now we got a whole new front tire thanks to this Nice man. Muy gracias, señor. <laughs> Tomorrow we can leave for Chile. How many layers are you wearing today? Six. Six. Wow. Nog iets aan toe te voegen? Ik heb mijn oor op. Oh, <laughs> then it's difficult. So. If you pl ever plan on traveling to Ushuaia, you should know that even in summer, it's still pretty cold here. So be prepared, dress yourself uh, with many different layers so that you can also take them off and on. Uh, otherwise you get really cold. Good to go! Super!
is really light and I can reach the ground really well so it's easy to make turns and that kind of stuff so for Irene it's really important for the pictures that the sun is shining so now the sun is out we're very lucky because normally in this area it rains a lot so we're very lucky Standing still, it's really hot again. Oh no, and this little fall is really stupid because the other one broke off as well. Motherfuckers. That was really unnecessary. I should not have dropped the bike. Okay. Look what an interesting looking trees. Half seem dead and the rest covered in some furry layer. Irene is now scouting for a nice photo place. the border to Chile and we have to stand in line before we can get through with our bikes at least we're not cold right wearing all our layers
help. <laughs> Thanks. Is er ook heel best dat je trekken? summer season so wear as many layers as you can so today I was wearing my rain suit that's layer one my motorbike jacket with the inner lining <clears throat> windproof jacket Another windproof jacket, which is warmer than the one that I just took out. And that was about it. <laughs> yeah. Eta! Eta, Eta, Eta. Eta. Now we are about to embark on the ferry to Puerto Arenas. We are now in Porvenir and we choose to go over the water to maybe spot some dolphins or whales. Well, we'll see when we get onto the ferry. Puerto Arenas or Punta 
punto arenas. Punto. Punta. Punta arenas. Punta arenas. So this is the city of Punta Arenas and today we are going to make a boat tour to see some penguins. I'm really excited about that. Well, apart from that, this city doesn't really have much to offer because it's yeah, not a very beautiful city to walk through. But uh, lots of people come here on their way to Tierra del Fuego or to see uh, to enter one of the national parks. So we just arrived at the island of penguins. Hello! <laughs> Is this enough penguin for you, Irena? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, you can smell them. It's really good because all the visitors must stay on the track so that the penguins have enough space for themselves. We are looking for a place right now to wash our bikes and um, this is Irene's bike. She did pretty well, as you can see it's not that dirty. However mine, yeah there was just one pool of mud that I could not escape. Uh, yes, this bike needs some cleaning. And my shoes, maybe too. Shall we wash you too, Irene? Thanks, sir. <laughs> Hooray! A clean bike again! So, what have you got there? Uh, <laughs> Riding me porter's dinner. <laughs> Horse Ranch! A little windy. I'm here 
my god. <laughs> so now we've got two bikes and only one mirror left. <laughs> going to be horseback riding so that is one horsepower first of all regular horsepowers and today we're going to go into nature and it will be so nice to ride on Oswaldo and the other lovely horse Motorbike wheel woman Irene on a horse, but still wearing her full motorbike outfit. Safety eh? first. And her camera, of course. Oh. Come, we're going. So here you see what Chili has to offer. It's just such. A beautiful landscape in the rivers flowing back to the sea. Wow, what a beautiful waterfall! Oh, there he goes! A little armadillo! Whole herd of guanacas! Guanaca from pretty up close and as you can see there are also quite a lot of guanaca bones here and that is because there are pumas living in this area quite a lot actually and they eat the guanacas that was a guanaca dinner so getting this one horsepower down Less natural to me than the 65 horsepowers of the KTM. So for half a year these horses are just set free on the estate so they can just roam around with their family and there are around 60 horses on the farm and they form small groups so they just trek around with their own personal group. <laughs> Such beautiful animals. So beautiful to see those horses in this beautiful nature area. It looks so much more natural than at home. Because in Holland we don't really have like open lands like this. Yes. And one more cliff to climb. Princess super super horses. Wow. <laughs> Ja, goed zo! Dat was met de afgrond wel, hè? Zo. Wauw! Echt wel? Ja. Het is een aanspraakje. Wat een super horses we hebben. En zo, we hebben het weer terug naar onze bikes. Dank je voor ons te nemen. En we hebben nog een stunning Chilean landscape. Which of course will be photographed by Irene. The wind is blowing so much here that it's hard for me to keep on standing straight and not fall off the bike. Look also at the Argentina sign. It's almost blown over! Hij is echt vanaf 
We're getting new espejos, mirrors for the bike.
around how incredibly beautiful it is here at Perito Moreno, the glacier in uh, southern Argentina. You know, I really believe humans have never been expelled from paradise. We live in a paradise planet. You just have to look around to see it, to realize it, and then to honor it and enjoy it. Here? until you're dead to already experience heaven. You can experience heaven right now. Even when your trousers are falling off your ass. on the gletscher right now and actually it is so clean this area that you can eat the snow and drink the water that can be found here so it's pretty awesome the water is uh, how do you say in english distilled 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 water has no minerals. If you want to live with this water more than three days, four days, you have to add salt and minerals. Ik mag geen foto's maken. Jammer. Dankjewel. Climbing the glacier. Wow. We follow you for the BBC. Yes. Okay, here we are. The ice is more or less four or five hundred years old. Five hundred years old. Yes. Drinking a whiskey on the glacier in Argentina. That's how you do things. Part of the glacier just broke off into the water. It's so magnificent to see the power of nature.
Ele não tinha assim. This is so stunning. This is paradise. Yeah, super mooie look.
Ik vond het hele fijne stof, hè? Ja. Maar volgens mij is dat ook het lastige voor mijn ogen. Dat het van... Ja. Je kan het niet eromheen, zeg maar. Het zijn nee.
Het maakt wel veel verschil, denk ik. Oh. En daarachter staan ze ook open. Dus dat waait wel door. Yes. Ah. There's always people who are more crazy than us. They cycle through this wind, these winds and this weather. Awesome! Woohoo! Yeah. Respect for that. So you have to wait for another two hours before you can continue riding. So then we just hike to the nearby waterfall. It was well look. Look at all the vegetation, it's really pretty. And um, yeah, there's a lot of cars waiting there, including us, for already three hours because uh, they're doing some road construction here because the road was supposedly uh, uh, broken or something so they're fixing it during the day anyway we're almost done I took a little nap here before it started raining it was really nice and we're about to head off to La Junta so here is the reason for the three hour waiting a landslide Oh, ik heb echt zo lekker geslapen. <laughs> so, the new road is being constructed for us. Perfect. Gracias. So now we are in, in Puyo Huapi. It's somewhere on the Carretera Austral. And today we're gonna cross from Chile again back to Argentina to Esquel. 
and as you can see this village is somewhere in the mountains and it's very wet and very muddy so all our stuff is covered in um, yeah some pretty fine dust ready for off-road starting right at the hostel Uh, yeah. Oh, moet ik even helpen? Ja. Oh. I got it. Ja? Ja. Ik kan heel graag over. Ik heb hem. Heel die? Ja? Heb je hem? Ja. Oké. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Ready for the last part of Carretera Austral. What happened? 
de luggage rack, de schroeven. Cut out. Tada! Tada! Well, so the tie rips fix about anything. Yeah. Let's hope they hold it. At least for the rest of the carretera. Austral. <laughs> Fresh bike again. So now number two.
dusty after riding a super dusty road. How dusty are you? Not at all. <laughs> You're lying! Well, I was behind, so maybe I've been riding in your dust clouds. Let's start with our last kilometers in Argentina and our last border crossing. And let's go for the 13th step in our passport. Okay, so this is loose sand. The worst. Then the journey's over. The off-road journey. Always nice to get help from other bikers. Oh, and we can even follow him. Perfect. <laughs>
are very Chilean men are very such selective. machismos that they don't allow women to have anything to say about how boxes should be picked up with motorbikes in it. That's so, even not even Irene, the motorbike queen. So we just stand here on the side watching our bikes are being put on this little wagon. Let's see if it fits. The bikes are nicely wobbling in their cages. Oh my god. <laughs> Hopefully everything will go all right. So we're in the harbor now. Safety, care. Safety shoes. Indeed. <laughs> and we did it all ourselves. All the yeah. papers, the paperwork. No Indeed. We are at Sam Export Company. Shipping company. But we're at the moment... Uh, <laughs> The motorcycles are created and they are being checked by customs. Right. Can you so believe it? It's the end of the journey. yet. No. I need some more time to process it. How long have you been away from home right now? Uh, a little over five months. A little over five months. Wow. Yes. And what was your favorite country? Uh, mm. Um, oh, there they are again. Oh, they're back. <laughs> Wait, first I have to do some other stuff. I don't know how to do it. See? Okay. Yeah, that was good. Ta da! There they are. So customs are now checking if everything is alright with the bikes and that the bikes are actually the bikes that are on the papers that we handed in. <laughs> so, this is it. Yeah, you have to say goodbye. You have to say goodbye to bikes. Goodbye, bye! Oh, I gotta miss you! <laughs> okay, well, at least we did it. We yeah. made it. <laughs>